Hi, I'm Dan Whitaker. Today we're having a look at the new US Open champion, Dustin Johnson's golf swing. So obviously it's uh, got a few idiosyncrasies in there. Um, obviously a lot of people tend to talk about the bowed wrist at the top of the backswing. Let's have a look at what things that are in there that you can take from it. Obviously it's the ball mild, but it actually drives the ball really, really straight. Now this week he was in a little cut, particularly when you had a look at the Pro Tracer a lot on a lot of the tees. Definitely favouring that cut shot this week. Now, one thing that uh, tends to set up the bowed position at the top is the fact that during this very first movement away with the golf club, okay, the distance between his legs and the butt of the club, it actually increases during that backswing, so his hands work away from him a little bit. Okay. Now then, as he starts to take the club to the top of the backswing, we can already see at this point here, because the arms have gone up and away from the body, that that left wrist is already starting to bow. So as we get it towards the top right here, we can definitely see that it's very, very bowed and obviously the club face is really short. Now, it does a pretty good job, but one of the things is that he, for him, having that left arm a little bit steeper than the shoulder plane, it means that it's a lot easier for his arms to be able to come back down in front of his body, kind of in this direction, okay? Um, it, it also gives him a lot of space. One thing that everyone else could be looking at right here is he doesn't restrict those hips. I mean, he's got a lot of right hip turn going on in this direction in the backswing. So this is a big thing, you know, this is going to create space. I see a lot of people um, who don't do this turn and this could really help you. Now, taking a look at it from the front view right here, what we'll notice is there's that straight away, that first move where he just forward presses now what that does is obviously we can see right here this has got the club head a lot further on than his body so you know it's almost the exact opposite to a classic one piece takeaway with the arms and body where the arms the body and the club are all working back together now this particular move doesn't necessarily hurt DJ's game but it it wouldn't be something that I would recommend a lot of you to try and employ so as we take this back now and we start to get it towards the top of the back swing what we'll see is at that top of the back swing, we can see that those arms are obviously really high, but we can see a huge shoulder turn, lots of hip turn, but a very, very stable lower half. So, you know, that, that those knees haven't moved in as much, even, you know, again, a lot of people you see getting this left knee coming in a lot here as that hip is turning backwards. That isn't the case with DJ, okay? So what we're going to see now is he's able to really aggressively use this lower half, and what we notice is that one of the big power sources is that he gets a little bit of extra tension kind of created in this area in the left shoulder. So what's happening is he starts that lower body first with a little bit of extra torque put through here. And then now, with his right elbows really into the side of the body already at this point. So it's very much into the body and there's loads of lag created in the golf shaft, okay? So what he then does is that right elbow stays into the body. Okay, now this is a real big thing for him. Okay, this is what allows him to really deliver the club with just the really aggressively using the body. Okay, now he very much keeps this right elbow flexed a lot through impact. Now that's because the right shoulder has worked downwards. Okay, if that right shoulder had stayed high, he would have to extend that right arm. I believe if that was happening, that is what's going to then start to see the club face start to change its angle, okay? Whereas what we notice is that this club face is very, very square to the arc from here, okay? Where we'd now see, you know, leading edge of the golf club is parallel to the spine. So if we actually highlight that for just a moment right here, so we see there's the leading edge, there's the spine, and then the leading edge just continues to be at 90 to the arc, okay? And it's still at 90, still at 90, still at 90 right here, okay? So the toe isn't passing the heel and he isn't flipping with his hands. Now, a lot of the flip with the hands that you tend to see with some of the longer hitters out there like Phil Mickelson will be because that right shoulder's a lot higher, okay? So they have to do it out of necessity to reach the ball. See that DJ's shoulder stays so low, so it means the right elbow can stay so flexed and he just continues to rotate. And it's only after impact that the arms fire off the body, okay, 
and that's when a lot of that extension comes. We have a look from the front view right here, the right elbow staying into the body, and it's almost like a body blow that he's hitting it with. And we see the hands are a long way forwards at impact. Now, with him being so far forwards here, it means that he's able to keep a very stable club face position. It's only way after the ball has gone that we will then see how that left arm moves away from the body here and both arms extend. It's a massive extension at this point, but it's way after the ball has been struck. Now, if DJ didn't have a very stable release with the shut club face at the top, that's when we'd see a lot of problems tending to come in with his swing. Now what we would notice is when his body tends to slow down and he isn't hitting shots pretty hard or with everything matching very nicely through impact, we tend to see the ball uh, go a bit left. But this week we saw some beautiful tee shots and lots of great fades off the tee and obviously an absolute bombs out there, okay? But once again, what we are noticing is that tee's not that high on this one, okay? So he's got the, got the tee down quite nicely, okay? meaning he's going to very much stay in his spine angle for a long time. Okay, there's a bit of push up from the ground from here, but then everything is just rotating through. Now, what we will notice is, from this front view swing, we will then see that the hips stall out just a little here, and then they, you see how they kind of collapse and return backwards. Okay, this is purely an effect. That's because he turned those hips so aggressively that they reach their end point at this moment in terms of rotation. So all that weight is in that left heel, is rotating around that ankle. And then what he's doing is, because they reach their end, they rebound and then turn again to the finish. Okay? So it's not that he's got a double hip turn or anything like that that people used to say with that Rory had. Uh, it is, it's just simply it gets to the end of the range of motion, bounces back and then turns again. What we'll notice is from down the line right here is something really impressive for me and for a lot of people to be looking at is how quickly that weight or is in that left heel at impact. This means that that upper body is a long way open, okay? But what we would do is if this was measured on 3D, his shoulders aren't going to be as open as his rib cage, only because the right shoulder is so down in the shot in this direction right here. Okay, which means it's hard to open those shoulders, but the rib cage, which would be from right here in this area, is opening very aggressively along with the hips. Okay. But like I say, that right shoulder down with a lot of right side bend and that right elbow flexed is something that he needs to have in order to deliver a very stable club face, just due to it being closed at the top, but he then obviously delivers that fabulously through here, makes it work so nicely, okay, just by keeping it very square and stable to the arc, okay. So it goes to show that we don't need to have a wildly, you know, rapidly closing club face through impact with flash speed from the hands in order to hit the ball a long way as DJ is right in the uh, top three or four longest hitters on the tour. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Please visit my website for more information from myself and I'll come back and speak with you very soon with lots of different content. Thanks a lot.